This video is part of the Public Health to Data Science Rebrand Program. All right, so welcome to our meetup tonight. Uh, thank you for coming. So right now we're doing uh, portfolio projects and um, we're looking at the data we're gonna use. And, um, you know, I just met with Mika and we were talking about what we were gonna try and do, which apparently is gonna, is kind of confounded right now. Um, I, I'm going to meet with you, Beth, I think on, on Sunday, and we're gonna nail down what you're gonna do. But actually, and, and Saqib hasn't really even started. So let's, it, is it okay if we start with you, Beth? Why, do, why don't you talk about, uh, first of all, what data you, you are working with and what data you think you want to use and um and just how it, how it's going sure so i would like to use um the readily available like the news uh, wastewater data they have for the cdc since we're doing it for much smaller facilities for my work right now so it would be a great um you know, uh, data set to work with and to do different uh, ecological studies in comparison and different statistical tests I would like to run and just visualization since um, I'm also very new to the field of environmental science. And so I'm just um, trying to get up to speed and learn as much as I can and also just also um, do some practical things with uh, statistical uh, analysis and designs that I have not done in a while. Can you tell me about what you, what it, what kind of fields are in your data? So there are a lot of things that are, when I said new is, um, there are a lot of, the, the processes I'm still learning, but so it's a lot of data and mostly the, the data fields are, um, of course, there's a lot of epi data. Um, when you say epi data, what do you mean? Like epidemiological data, like um, like in places. wastewater. Yes, compared to where it has been studied and uh, what population has been studied. So, and then mm -hmm. why those facilities or group of people or what that population is, uh, like you know, considered. Um, vaccination status of the patients within that um study group and oh so i i see so so um so beth is on a team of people who are doing analysis of data where what the scientists have done is they've sampled wastewater so when you think about that that's so different from sampling people right like if yes. you go to sample like like I'm thinking I'm right next to a river. Like if you go sample from that river, it really matters what day it is, really matters where in the river you got it. It can matter how big your sample was. You know, it's kind of like even taking blood from somebody and then analyzing it. And so what if I hear you correctly, Beth, you have these data, these rows of data that are about the samples, but they'll also patch on like I'm talking about information about like the weather and the location, but it sounds like they'll even patch on information about epidemiologic like rates around the region in there. Yes, it does. Um, that's usually provided by, you know, the the participants. So we're not collecting it directly, but um, and then the lab data is mostly like, you know, what kind of controls that are being used, what kind of concentration methods they are used, and the different, like lots of different tests that they run on one particular sample and the replicates and tracking them. And um, um, it sounds like a puzzle. Like yes. it sounds like it's very hard to even just get an analytic data set together. Yes. And so that's what I've been working on. And I've been tasked with, um, creating some analytical data set right now uh, well uh, some analysis and so i'm um, just so most of it has not been um documented or does not have a data dictionary or sort but it does when it comes out of like whatever software they're used but it's not um the like you know the um uh, data like dictionary that we're talking about yeah you, you know beth that's an, an interesting point and i just want to stop here to emphasize that point i started making data dictionaries just by hand because i had problems and i need to keep track of stuff later i was around people who were running sql databases 
And I said to them, oh, I need to make a data use agreement with you. Do you have any data dictionaries for any of your SQL tables? And they're like, oh, it's easy. We automate that. I'm like, you can automate that? Well, you can't really automate that. I mean, you can automate in SAS and in SQL and in a lot of programs a function to go through and get all the field names in a table and their width and whatever. But that's really not the information you need. You could do that by hand. What you want to know is what the field meant or where it came from or, you know, all this other stuff. This is sort of human stuff. Mm -hmm. So that can be a source of miscommunication when I've gone to people and say, can I have your data dictionary? I don't, you know, I, I get the SQL barf. And then I come back to them, I'm like, I don't understand what any of these fields are. I mean, they've got kind of revealing field names, but I don't really know what they mean. What I often do in that case is if there are people doing data entry, like I think you guys are using um, RedCap, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll take a screenshot of the form, the, the data entry form. Then I'll put it on a PowerPoint slide. Then I'll research each field in there and I'll put a text field on it in like red on the PowerPoint slide for what is the field name that lands in. That, that is always something that can help you navigate through an undocumented backend. But if you're just getting like an extract from like lab software, that's not going to work, but so, okay. Well, it sounds like you're getting somewhere. <laughs> it, you at least know how big the problem is. Well, very good. Um, do you have any specific questions, Beth, at this point for me or the group that you think we could help you with? Not really. It's, it's really um, not at this point. Now you're still sort of like wading through it all, huh? I have a few questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so Beth, so what is your goal? What are you looking for at the end? What do you mean? Like, what's my goal for the work project? Yes. So the, uh, 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 you put the data together, analyze it. What would you like to find it? Yeah, like what's the research question? Poor Beth, I've been asking her this. Yeah, and and it's yeah. like torture, it's torture. Like a, so so yeah, Beth is gonna probably so, try to tell, tell you, but I'll tell you, Mika, this is what happens when epidemiologists don't design studies. Okay, go ahead, Beth. <laughs> so some of the questions that, that I'm trying to work through is, um, so they have, just an example, they have different methods that they use to, detect a certain uh, um, virus. Mm -hmm. And so we have to do a lot of comparison to see which method was more effective at, um, you know, uh, detecting more of the virus that we were looking at. Um, so or there it, it would be like doing a correlation between uh, certain like the water quality uh, parameters against um, against the virus. Say if 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 like the pH level or the temperature has somewhat. Um, or right now at this point we don't really have a gold standard, but we're just keeping the descriptive part of this or what we're finding in the water. Um, I mean, the hypothesis is that if the water is too hot, then like if we're using COVID, supposedly it will um, it would not survive or you would not be able to capture a lot of, uh, detect a lot of the virus. So, but for now, we're just doing correlation and just keeping it as what we see. We're not doing much with the water parameter, like uh, parameters. So, so basically the problem is they have some logical problems with however they design this, right? So if you're trying to detect COVID and wastewater, what you're probably trying to do is either predict what's happening in the population or mm -hmm. just diagnose what's happening in the population, just see what's happening, right? Either you're, you're doing something to try and predict what's gonna happen or you're trying to predict, trying to see what's happening now. But 
if that's why you're looking in there because you don't know what's happening then and you're not sure the right way to look like you don't know what is the optimal way to test this right then my Sorry, opinion I'm... my opinion is this should have been worked out in a lab you know or 80 percent worked out in a lab under great conditions and then just a few things where you know a few choices like the choices are narrowed down in the lab because the problem like like beth said is they don't really have a gold standard like they they if they detect a lot like they take these different samples in different ways if they detect a lot of virus does that mean it's right and the other ones are wrong you know like are well maybe this one's not right and there's one that would detect more and that one's right like like how do you even know when you're right so what I was thinking is that she's going to be living in ecological study land where you've got like rates in the population or in a location and then rates in the water and you're just trying to correlate them. But yeah. I don't know how to answer anything that way. Yeah. I mean, maybe I, a regression would show it. Well, yeah. Do you have yeah, an idea? Actually, I was thinking that so the you know, San Diego's been taking that wastewater COVID R and uh, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, piece of the COVID. And they are researching it. They are just sampling regularly. And then, so they, if you see that, just visualize it. And then, so how many people are hospitalized? How many people are test positive, COVID positive? and the wastewater count of the COVID piece. Interesting, it's just so interesting when it goes parallel. First of all, the RN, uh, COVID piece number start to increase. And then so the, that patient count increases. It just goes to parallel almost. Well, one wow. goes fast and another one sort of kind of chasing it visually. You can see that if you visualize it. You can poke around the San Diego uh, UCSD. I might be able to see. Yeah, if you can find it, go ahead and share your screen. So do you get what she's describing, Mika? I mean, Beth, what Mika's describing? I thought so, but I'm not sure. Like, OK, I, I think what she's describing is, so imagine a time series plot, right? Like it's right. over time, OK. So now let's put a line on it, which is like the rate of COVID in this region where you're testing the wastewater, like, you know, the mm -hmm. rate goes up and up, of people getting sick, right? Now on top of it, you put the rate of, of COVID in your wastewater. So that's on top of it. Then you have these other metrics. And what, what Mika was saying is you can watch these metrics go through time, like one chasing the other, you know, one goes up and then wow. the other goes up. It's like really cool pattern. Which yeah. Is like everybody's dying, but it's still a really cool pattern. And she's looking for the visualizations because San Diego is already doing it, which is why I was a little confused, Beth, when I met, when I learned you were working on this project, because I was like, this sounds like this problem has been solved. You know, obviously if San Diego is doing crazy stuff with it. It sounds like it was solved, but yeah the cdc is saying no it's not solved you guys need to solve it then i guess it's not so, solved. you're right it is it is solved i think i didn't give a bigger picture i just went into what i'm doing or what i'm supposed to be doing we are trying to establish a standard or like the best method that you could use to um so the so that other state local departments could be able to use those um but what's to wrong adapt with yeah, but so what's wrong doing... with doing what San Diego does? Like they're already in, they already built a whole shop around it. They've got visualization and everything. I mean, even if you come up with something that's so so-called better, Sa San Diego's already running with this. So you know what I mean? <laughs> so these tests that what we're comparing, they're not new at all. Those are been the tests that are already been out there. We're just doing a comparison of which one is better so that um, others could adapt it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. But I would just like if I were. And then this is at a very small facility compared to like a community wide. So this is like uh, this is at like colleges and uh, nursing homes and very small congregated areas. And then just to so that they could adapt uh, with wire surveillance as part of their uh, service overall so surveillance. Sort of like system. micro surveillance, like they could do micro surveillance. I guess that's kind of what you're trying to do, right? Yeah. 
Hmm. Well, Mika, what were you going to say? The second one is that so there maybe you can just uh, uh, narrow down what virus or what piece you want to look at. And so maybe hepatitis or whatever, I don't know. But if that's all the people's nursing facility, that something that's even, I don't know. So Well, I think they only did certain tests on that water, right? Is that right, oh. Beth? Um, say that again. Like, like Mika was saying, you could look for hepatitis too. And I was thinking your protocol made them only test for like covid -y things, right? Or did they test for other stuff? So most of the tests that we're doing, the, the analytical test or analysis right now is on COVID because we just finished that. Um, it was over a certain period of time, so it just concluded. And then um, the new project will be on um, AR. So we'll be looking at uh, antib uh, antibiotics resistant uh, bacteria. And um, mm -hmm. but yeah, you could test for uh, drugs as well in the in the wastewater, and I think they there've been a lot of uh, studies done. Or okay, it's an emerging field. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Yeah, I guess I probably should read up on it. So this is what um, Mika sent everybody, right? Nice. Okay. 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 Oh, look at this. Yeah, I'm just staring at it because I've never seen that shape before, right? <laughs> Oh, look at this is really beautiful. See, Beth, you could just like steal it. <laughs> you know, I steal this thing. Here's Encina. Oh, now I'm looking at how this looks and I'm wondering, what do you think this is? Is this Python or maybe R? It probably is Python. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because I've seen this before. Like see how it shifts, see how it, um, Sometimes it's really elegant when it moves like that. Look at how pretty this is. See how this reports up there? Yeah, yeah. you can kind of see. Yeah, so what we got reported cases and viral load and wastewater. Wow, it's right on top of each other. Now you see, Beth, what you could do is if you read into this, you could figure out what method they used, right? Mm -hmm. and, and just see, you know, if you're like, you might have, um, samples that use that method, like whatever one they use. And then if you could be like, oh, okay, well, I'm just for fun going to take those that use the same method as this and try to make a graph like this. Like that's usually where I start is I just copy someone else. And this one, what's going on? Oh, these are so pretty. Aren't these pretty? I have trouble like yeah it's pretty but I don't understand this. I, yeah, I can't understand it either because like what's going on here? <laughs> You know, this little yellow thing, like how how does it oh I guess I guess, I guess there are different um yeah, you just have to like go you just have to look at a slice at a time or else it will go crazy, apparently. Like if you go here, you're like, okay, I get it. It's like it's basically a stacked bar chart, not separated into bars. So crazy, go crazy. Okay, but it's beautiful and we know that. Mika's getting her tax for your dollars worth. So, <laughs> oh well, just be happy you don't work there because you'd have to make that. Um, all right, so um, so that's a really great thing in my opinion that Mika shared that with you because when I don't know how to visualize some data, I just start by trying to do it the way other people did. The only thing that ever stumped me was that whole antibiotic resistance in county you know like i there was so much data like how do you visualize it? it and i really didn't know what to do but then i solved it i did an upset plot and that worked i showed you my um natasha and my uh dashboard so yeah it's like you do kind of have to find the right visualization that really speaks to you that answers the question, but you usually go through a whole bunch of them first that don't speak to you. What I'm believing that Beth will probably end up doing a lot of in the beginning is like correlations and like heat maps, like correlation matrices. You all know what a heat map is, right? 
um, because mm -hmm. the the issue with what she's got is everything is going to be correlated, right? But it was kind of like that article we were looking at, Mika. Some things will be more of more correlated than others. Like some will be more outliery than others, and maybe that's interesting. But that's probably what we will have to start doing at the beginning to see really understand how the data all behave with each other. That was my thought anyway. Um, so Saqib, why don't you talk to us? I know you're you do statistics now. Uh, what kind of data do you work with at work? Uh, HCUP, do you not have any HCUP? Yeah, Mika, have you ever used HCUP? I created it. You created HCUP. That's so I cool. I developed it. <laughs> oh, you really? developed it? That's so cool. How did you do that? Oh, no, no. Yeah, I worked for that. So there are company who are actually contracted with ARC. And then so uh. my company was the one actually, you know, generated every year. And then I was part of that team generating the data. Is it is it any good? Mika, you're behind the scenes. Is it any good? <laughs> it was a lot of lots of work, but it's generally pretty clean. We cleaned it as much as we can, ready to for the research. That's a research data. So you, yeah. So I I don't work with H cup because I don't know much about actual costs because that's why people tend to work with H cup is they like to use the money fields in there. Um. Yeah. Like, like that's so interesting. You prepared those files. Like, I almost never analyze them because I just don't need to do money things. But maybe I. But this might be just a, a, a bias I have. Sakib, what kind of analysis do you do with the H cup data? So, oh, and and just uh, just before to make sure everybody understands, it's healthcare utilization project or program data. So it's about healthcare utilization. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. So go ahead. Nancy. I have just started. So I have heard that they use HCAP data. So I had to go through initial training, like what it is. So yes. I know, know like this is a big data. So my other coworker, he is dealing with it. And like, we don't do like very hardcore analysis, like just a basic analysis kind of like T-test, or frog report or ANOVA, those kind of thing. So I haven't gotten any project with ASCAP data, but I'm supposed to get it, but my, my other coworker, and I know that it's a big data and like he like he's trying to understand it, but it's he, he told me today that it's kind of like very confusing. So then they're trying to get connected with the HCAP team, like to get what it is, like there was an option like called number of clusters. Like when they ran the data in SAS, they found there is a there is a term called number of clusters. So my coworker was having issues like, what is this cluster mean? Like, like what is this cluster actually? Is it like a cluster from the cluster sampling or what is that? So so in other words, they gave H Cup gave him a field that was named something, but he didn't know what it meant. He didn't know what kind of cluster it was. Like he couldn't find it in the documentation or uh not yeah so because even like the investigator principal investigator he doesn't know so nobody then, knows i mean you have to study h cup documentation like for years like you have to study it a lot it's complicated <laughs> yeah yeah so that's why that's the tool but i thought that like epic data so i thought that maybe epic is a particular source like who, from where people can pull up data so my assumption was also that HCAP may be a particular source, like people can pull up their data. No, no, here, this is what happens is a lot of people have medical records in the EPIC system. And if they're a participating HCAP facility, there's this structured like data they have to pull out of EPIC and ETL, they've got to put it in a certain shape. There's usually this interface control document like H cup. Maybe Mika knows about this. Like you probably had instructions or the agency had instructions of everybody submitting their data in a certain format. And so what happens, Sakib, is you're not wrong. That data that lands in H cup starts a lot of places in Epic, 
but the epic structure is all different at different places. And so, so somebody has to prepare the data to be an H cup structure to give it to the agency to give to Mika's old old consulting group so they can transform it into what you're analyzing now, so, which is a lot of work, like Mika was saying. So it's really like I was in the situation when I was at the Army where I ran a thing like HCUP. I, I had all these data sets that were ready for analysis. And a bunch of universities decided they wanted to do a study with that data, but they decided to get the data originally from the agencies or from the commands rather than from my system. And I said, why do you want to do that? It's going to take you so much time to learn about the data and figure out what to use. My data is all cleaned up and documented. Why don't you just use mine? Well, they didn't. And then they spent six months just in sheer confusion, just sheer confusion. Because as Mika will know, like, because she did those data sets, you do a lot of cleaning up so that the data sets will fit together if you connect them these poor people, all these different university people were getting all these data sets from the original source and they couldn't connect them. And so that's what would happen, Zakib, if you went just to Epic, that data is a mess. And so the people who at each Epic location who transform that data into what they're supposed to submit to HCUP, that's a whole production. I, I don't have any idea we... because for most of the projects so far, I have been given like, like, Maybe they pulled their data from RedCap. They have their data, oh, red cap. and then they just give it, and then with the with the protocol, and then there's the analysis. That's it. But <laughs> there's no documentation there. So, no, the the red question was that, like maybe they said, like they shared the SAS Studio, and the HCAP data is available in SAS Studio. So my assumption was that oh, maybe I can just download the data and maybe just analyze normal. But I don't because right now. Like from this conversation, it seems like maybe it's not like that. Maybe it's something different. Well, we'll, we'll figure it out. Mika, what were you going to say? Uh, first of all, so the, um, uh, so the HCAP is hospital discharge data. We, so the HCAP collect, collect data from that. So each state public health agency, those agencies are actually gather that so their hospital data for their own purpose. We purchase those data from each state and then put them together. And so they are, so we uh, so the age cup data has a couple of different the they uh, different things. So the state inpatient data is at uh, each state nationwide inpatient data is the one that we pull that so all the state data together put them together and then study we do the statistical that's the nis right the national inpatient sample right the nis yeah, yeah. nationwide national nationwide we call nationwide, it nationwide, nationwide. yeah yeah nationwide uh, inpatient sample that's the one actually uses that uh, stratified uh, uh cluster uh, i don't remember oh yeah so you've got yeah, the, like that those fields with the cluster number or whatever yeah so they're otherwise so otherwise so they're big state like a uh, texas big state oh. like a uh, california dominates it and then uh -huh. we don't want that so, so that's what the, it's a big data. So the my co-worker who is dealing with the like with a PI, and then what is happening? Like whenever he is trying to run it in SAS Studio, yeah. so it's taking a long time. Like maybe one day or something. So that's why the company right now they are, they like they recently they have had a conversation with SAS Via, like which is kind of cloud thing. So they thought that. Maybe they would go to the cloud system so that maybe they could have more computing power, but I don't have any idea. Really, I don't have any idea. And I told wow. you that, I told you that, like, even though I do have a stat background, but I didn't have that much exposure to analyzing data. Mm -hmm. So, so like, so I, I, I don't well, know. Can, can I interrupt you? I, I just want to interrupt all of you for a second, because I want to tell you, 
I'm on this invited SAS community, like this insider community. I don't know, I because I wrote a book, maybe they got me in there. And we all were on a discussion board and just saying, hi, I'm this person, I'm that person. Everybody had been using SAS for like 20 years. One of the topics that came up, Saqib, was that a lot of people who have SAS servers basically are, are having a problem you're having and they can't go to VIA. It's like, it's like trying to carry a rock up a ladder, like getting all the data into the cloud. Like it's like they, they're stuck, you know? So this whole idea where you're like, okay, you're out of room on your SAS server, just convert to VIA and go put it in the cloud. A lot of people are running into real problems with that, just in real life. Um, now, Mika, what were you gonna say? So the, uh, the back the, the back in time when I was working on that, so the, uh, that the age cup data. Yeah, I was also doing user support. <laughs> and so the, the exactly that problem that running was so slow and so it is so big. And those are the time we actually suggested that just to select exactly the variables you need and then load it. So they don't load the whole data into your pro, uh, into your computer. That's overwhelming. So that's one of the things that yeah, we usually suggested. We occasionally write a program to select selectively loading that uh, age cup data. We did yeah. that. Yeah, and and I I believe what you're talking about, Mika, is when you write really complex like in in file like i forgot what it is that input data thing where you tell you take a fix with file and you carefully tell sas to skip over things like write this part then skip over write in this one skip over so you're only like writing in the data you really need like from the raw data and this is really picky but we used to do that too at the army but yeah, there's a so there's another the there's another trick i've tried and it works and that is where you load all that data into a sql server and then you build a view in the sql server because sql runs a lot better has a lot most sequels have a lot better data management if you build a view in the sql server that has the data you want exactly the data you want exactly the rows and columns a view is like a filter then you can use sas access to you can go from your sas environment and use an ODBC connection, and you have to log in, you have to get everything authenticate, but then you can hit that view and just like data A set view, and that comes in as a table. Yeah, or so they are totally changed to that. So they are, use Python. Python, oh, Python is reading that one row at a time. But so SAS reads can... one row at a time too. What's that? SAS reads one row at a time too. My impression is, well, uh, I don't know. No, no, SAS really does. Have you ever seen that diagram, Mika, about how SAS processes each row when it's reading it in? I don't know. So yeah, then, yeah. I don't. Do this. I've never seen that. <laughs> but... I'll, I'll see if I can find it. It's it, they always people who write about. I'm trying to the PDV. Do you remember the PDV in SAS? It's the something data vector. Uh, yeah. It's how they're building, it builds the data vector. You know, I mean, Python apparently is operating like SAS, which surprised me. I didn't know it did that. Mm -hmm. You know, that it was line by line like that because SQL doesn't really run that way. It's got an optimizer and it's using a lot of statistics. But, um, but yeah. It, my opinion is whoever said, I think it was Mika, uh, whoever said, do your documentation, study your documentation, pick out what data you actually want to read in and just read that in. Generically, that's really a good idea. <laughs> With big data. All right. Well, then when we meet Saqib, we can talk about what you want to do. You know, you can... H cup is not private data, right? Like if if you can get your hands on it and do an independent project, we we can make really cool, interesting things with an H cup data. Yeah, you can do it. It just uh, 
It just uh, depending on uh, the fitted H cup data you want to use, some of them cost you. It shouldn't be so expensive, at least back then. <laughs> oh, well, we have to pay you, Mika, for making such nice data sets for it. Well, I, I think he has, a, like, it sounds like he has a PI and the PI had a grant and they bought oh, okay. the data. Cool. So, because he has it at work. It, it's just, it's not as touchy as your data, uh, you know, at your work, Mika, because, you know, HCUP is HCUP. It's meant to be shared. It's just a matter of buying it. So, I was thinking, you know, whatever Saqib is assigned at work, we can still use HCUP to do something maybe more interesting. Um, all right, well, we're coming to the end of our hour. Does anybody have any questions um, before we end tonight? Thank you for watching this video, which is part of the Public Health to Data Science rebrand program. If you are interested in joining the program, please sign up for a 30-minute Zoom interview using the link in the description.